Hello, welcome back to The Crafty Organizer. I'm Noreen Burke, and on my channel, I love bringing ideas for you to get organized, declutter, do upcycles, DIYs, and do anything crafty. One of the things that motivates me for some reason is moving things around in my home. I don't mean moving one small item, I mean flipping all of the furniture around for different layouts. This for some reason totally re-energizes me and gives me a whole new outlook which usually motivates me to do things that I don't want to do. So if you are interested in that, let's see what I did to my living room. Let's get started. I think I literally change my living room around about twice a year, sometimes more, depending upon what's happening. One of the reasons I do it is our furniture isn't very easy to clean around and we have pets and kids and we live by an airport and I like to have my windows open so the house is dirty all of the dang time. So. To really clean under things, I end up moving it. And if I'm gonna move my furniture to clean under and around it, I may as well put it back in a new place. And like I said, for some reason, having new layouts just gives me new energy in a space. So typically what I'll do, and I know this looks goofy, but I will sit down and start mapping out what can I put where? Because I've moved things around so many times, I know all of the pieces fit in some sort of configuration, so I truly don't even measure anymore. But I will sit there, look at this clip. I ended up filming this as a recreation of how I sit there and plan because this is really what it looks like. Put that there, and I move that over there, and then I can put that over there, but will that fit? No, I'll have to move that over there. But what will I do with that? I guess I can move it there. No, I don't want it there. I can move that over there, and then I can swap that with that, and that will, oh, blah, wait a minute, that's not gonna work. Wait, I'll have to move that over there. This is literally how my mind works. <laughs> I do use a layout on Excel, which will allow me to move pieces if it's something I haven't done before. But like I said, we've lived in this house almost nine years now. I know where everything fits. So really it's just a matter of switching things around and oftentimes I like to pick up things from the curb and upcycle them. So we end up adding pieces and then I'll either keep my new favorites or I'll start letting some go. So here's a look at how the living room was laid out. Right before Christmas, I switched everything around to make room for our Christmas tree. What this ended up doing though, was making the room really dark because where the bay windows are, I ended up putting our TV. So you can see here, I have my hall tree flanked by two bookcases. This just made it so dark and I haven't been very happy with it. As you may or may not know, I live in the living room. I sleep in here and the two bedrooms that we have, I've given up for my teenagers. So the couch has to be set up in a way that I can see the TV and feel comfortable. But this little spot right here is the middle of the room, which just makes it super awkward. So I break it in half so that one side is our resting area and the other side is usually used for either just open space where I can bring out a folding table that we use as a dining table. I do have a table that I have up in my rafters right now that we'll sometimes bring out and I'll use that as a dining space. I'm on the fence right now as to whether I wanna bring that back in or if the folding table works. It just allows us to have a lot more open space. We like to dance a lot, we like to play games. So having a big open space for whatever we want to do is kind of nice and the folding table has been working pretty well. So. I'm on the fence as to which to do with that. But here is me moving all of the furniture and the chaos that I go through. I do it by myself and it usually takes me about three hours to do. I, I, I was gonna take this out, but this truly is my goofy energy. I do, I do this all of the time. So I wish I could say this was staged, but it, it's not. This is just what I do. <laughs> so I just start moving things out of the way. I had just literally moved everything and done a deep cleaning right before Christmas, so I'm not too worried about the deep clean this time. I'm just moving things out of the way so I could start flipping the pieces one by one. I love these bookcases. Someone was getting rid of them. They work great because I can use them in so many configurations. This little sofa table was a curbside find. I was painting it and I ran out of paint. It was behind the couch, so nobody noticed until now. 
Uh, my furniture is on movers, so it's usually pretty easy for me to just slide into a new place, which makes it a lot easier. Now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and flank my couch with the other single bookcase. When I had it on either side of the hall tree, it was really nice because it made it look like this giant built-in. But we've had it that way for over three years now, so I just wanted something a little bit different. Now it looks like my couch is in a little nook, and it allows a lot more light to flow through. So even though I showed you that whole, hmm, what should I do, I'm still stuck right now because after I moved everything, I realized that the bookcases next to the heater is a lot of solid wall space because I was going to move my hall tree where that little sofa table is under the metal sun thing. But I thought that would be too much tall on one wall, so I had to rethink what I wanted to do. I also decided I wanted the artwork that I had made on this wall, which means I need to raise the light. So I'm just moving the anchor up a little bit and then I'll remount the sturdy hook on that wall so that I can hang the DIY art that I've made. Now that that's in place, I could start moving the other pieces into place. So for me, it's a lot of just sliding things around. And as I said, all of my furniture has those thick felt pads on them, so it's super easy for me to move things around. This piece I have on a towel because I move it so much. So what was left after moving that little piece was just putting in the little decorative pieces, hanging up mirrors and things like that. So it took me just about two and a half hours to move everything, clean up after myself. I think I had one picture that I needed help hanging and that sat on the floor for two days, but once I got that hung, I love it. It's open again. I wish I could say I'm not going to change it, but I, I, if someone knows psychologically what it is about change that invigorates people, I would love to understand the psychology of it. I've tried researching it before. I don't know what it is, but for me personally, if I have things that are in the same space for too long, I get bored, I check out, and I don't enjoy it. I have family members of mine who have had their homes set up for years, like 20 plus years, and it works perfectly for them. Every time I suggest, hey, you should change things around, they just look at me like, why? <laughs> So it's clearly just something that I enjoy doing. If you do this, please let me know in the comments. And I'd love to hear, how often do you move things around? So here's what my space looks like afterwards. This little hall tree with the metal sun is the only thing that stayed in the same place. I ended up moving this hall tree to the opposite wall so that we have a place to sit when we pull out the folding table. And by the way, this hall tree I have had since the mid-90s. It was my first grown-up piece of furniture I purchased. By moving the dresser to the other side, it gives us a place for the TV. It gives me a little sitting area. This little piece doubles as my laundry because that seating area opens up and that's where I stick my laundry because this is also my bedroom. Also, between the chair and the cabinet is a little space, so I hide all of my magazines so that they're not out, but I can grab them when I read. This little stay a while sign, I don't know if you're interested in how this was made, but I see these all of the time and you might think it's gross, but lots of baby furniture these days come with dressers and they have a removable changing table and most people throw that changing table away. That's what that piece is. I took the changing table, obviously cleaned it well, disinfected it, lined the back with the same paper that I have on my bookcases here, and then with foam core from the Dollar Tree, I just DIY stenciled the stay a while, but not too long. Let's not make it weird. So if you're interested in how I did this, I actually have found another changing table pretty recently that was just a curbside find. As I said, I seem to see these on the curbs and at thrift stores all of the time. They make great art pieces. You could paint inside. I've been wanting to decoupage the inside with newsprint and then do a watercolor over it. There's a ton of art out there that looks like this and I think it's gorgeous. So let me know in the comments also if you would like to see how to DIY this into artwork. As I said, this stayed the same. This is where Yzma sleeps and that way we can move her bed if we need to. And she is the queen of the house now, so we have to make sure she's happy. Since I am stalling, I went ahead and did my coffee bar and I really like the way that looks, but uh, this is all stalling because 
I don't want to do this linen closet, you guys. Look at it. <laughs> I'm going to do it though. This weekend I have plans, but when I get back, I'm tackling this space once and for all. I'm going to pull out the good, the bad, the ugly, the embarrassing, and show you a better way to organize this. It is a very small space. It is just about eight inches deep, which how do you store linens in there, which is why it ends up getting messy all of the time. But we're a family of three. We don't need a ton of towels, a ton of blankets, a ton of linens. So I'm going to go through, really talk about the what you need, what you can store in there, but show you creative ways to fold things so that they will fit in a small space like this. So make sure you're subscribed so you see that in just a few days. Thank you to my patrons who allow me to make these videos. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in a couple of days when we tackle that linen closet. Bye.